storms reveal foundations. And the storm that we are right in the middle of, it's going to reveal whether people have faith or the foundation of their heart is doubt and unbelief. Hallelujah. I want to read to you out of 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. The Bible says that you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. I've had this phrase just in my spirit, just kind of like, stewing in my spirit all week that greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. Listen, we got to meditate on these scriptures and get this on the inside of us because of what's, what's happening in our nation. I'm telling you, storms reveal foundations. And the storm that we are right in the middle of It's going to reveal whether people have faith or the foundation of their heart is doubt and unbelief. So this scripture, it just, it popped out this week. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And before I forget, let me read from the New Living Translation. It says it this way, but you belong to God My dear children, you have already won a victory over those people. Who are those people? You see, what's happening in the world today is there is an anti-Christ spirit that is trying to to dominate and take over. Are you with me? It's a spirit. When you look at the federal government, there's a spirit behind it. It's an antichrist spirit that hates God's people, that hates people really in general. Why? Because we are created in the image and the likeness of God. And so the enemy does not want people to know who they are, does not want you to know that you are created in the image and the likeness of God. So there's this spirit that is at play, but greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. Listen, we have already overcome. So I want to talk to you just for a few moments about victory, which is something that we already have. We already have the victory. And listen, it's not dependent upon your circumstances. It's not dependent upon your own natural strength. It's not dependent upon your own natural resources, but it's dependent upon the one, the greater one, I should say, who lives on the inside of you. And so we need to have a revelation as the church of the greater one who is in us, that he is infinitely greater than anything that the devil throws at us. Listen, I find many Christians, they walk beneath their potential, their God-given potential in who he's created them to be. They walk beneath that. But God wants you to walk as an overcomer. The Bible says that we have, which is past tense, we have overcome. And so, listen, you are hardwired already with victory on the inside of you. And so the storm that we are in today, you've already been prepared for it. Because greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. Listen, the disciples, they found themselves twice in a boat in the middle of a storm. Storms happen. Storms take place. Are you with me? And what did they do whenever they were in the middle of a storm? On one occasion... Jesus was in the back of the boat, and he's sleeping. I don't know if you guys have actually read that story, but some of the details were just popping out, popping off the page. It says that there was a great tempest, that the waves were crashing against the boat, just beating against the boat. I mean, this boat is just, it is 
It is rocking. You ever see these massive ships? I don't even know how people work out there. I'm like, that's not me. These massive ships out in the ocean. Uh, uh, the seas are just roaring with those huge, gigantic waves. Well, Jesus, he's in the boat. The disciples, they're all awake. He's in the back of the boat, and he's sleeping. And the boat is just, I mean, rocking. The waves are hitting it. There's great wind, and water was coming into the boat. And Jesus in, is in the back of the boat just... <laughs> he's sleeping. He's totally at rest. And he's just... <laughs> out. And the disciples, they come to Jesus. Jesus! Don't you care that we're drowning? I'm dying over here. <laughs> what are you doing? We're dying. Wake up. And Jesus got up and he rebuked the wind. He rebuked the waves. And he looked at the disciples and he said, where is your faith? In other words, why didn't you do what I just did? I want you to know that right in the middle of this storm, you can, you can rest. You can be at peace. I'm telling you, storms reveal foundations. How many of you remember the tsunami that took place in 2004? It killed like 600,000 people. Our Bible school teacher, he would travel in and out of, of Indonesia, and he had been to Banda Aceh, Indonesia, and uh, he went afterwards and, and saw the destruction. And you could see the only thing that was left were slabs, concrete slabs of, of buildings, but the foundation was a slab. All the other homes that were built on stilts and and all that stuff, they were completely gone. The only thing that, that remained was that concrete slab. Storms reveal whether you're in faith or unbelief. When the disciples were in the boat, that storm revealed that they had unbelief. That there was fear there. So the things that I'm talking to you about today, if, if there is fear that is gripping your heart, then you've been building your life, and your heart with the wrong things. Jesus said, whoever takes my word and builds his life will be like the man who built his house on the rock. This is not a time to freak out. This is not a time to get depressed. Listen, I'm, I don't care how bad things get. I'm just glad I, didn't, I wasn't born in like 1710 <laughs> or 1360 or A.D. 101. You know what I mean? As I'm enjoying the A.C. right now. I mean, y'all like those cushiony chairs you're sitting on? The carpet, the speakers. I like being able to go to Walmart and just... Buy some meat with a sticker on it, and I mean, that's, that's good times right there. That's easy. Can you imagine having to make, like, kill and then make everything that you want to eat? I'm good. I'm good right here. I'll stay right in this time that I'm living in. Amen. But storms reveal the foundation. And so, are you in faith? Listen, right now is the time for the church to shine in faith. Yeah. Like, we got this because greater is he who lives in me. And do you know who that's talking about? It's talking about Holy Spirit. We've been talking about Holy Spirit for weeks, uh, actually since I've gotten here. <laughs> Mr. Kenneth said, I don't know how somebody can talk about Holy Spirit so much. It just doesn't end. It's like Bill Johnson. He said he had one message. It's just 600 hours long. <laughs> you know. But Holy Spirit is the greater one who lives inside of us. And so we have access to resources that the world does not have access to. 
Listen, those millionaires and billionaires that are out there, they are freaking out because they're afraid now that they have reached that level of success, now they're so afraid they can't sleep at night because they've attained all this wealth and now they're in fear every night. They can't even sleep because they're worried they're going to lose it all. People are taking their lives. You know, in Singapore, very wealthy nation, when they lose something like money, a job, they just take their own life. So I'm telling you, you and I, we have access to resources they don't have. They can have it. They just have to humble themselves and recognize their need for God. The Bible says you have to be poor in spirit in order to inherit the kingdom of God. That means you have to recognize your need. You know, even Jesus, he recognized his need for the Father. He, he said, I only do what I see my Father doing. I only say what I hear my Father saying. He said, without the Father, I, I can't do anything. That, that's when you have access to heaven's resources. When you get to the place where you're totally dependent upon the Lord. And so just real quickly, I'm, I'm going to end in just a few minutes. Somebody say, yeah, right. No, I'm serious. I will. I will. But 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, the NLT version says, but you belong to God. I've been meditating on that this week. I belong to the Lord. I am, you know, when I went in the military, it was like, you're now property yeah. of the U.S. government, <laughs> right? Yeah. But now, I'm property of God Almighty. Yeah. In fact, I'm taken, just so you know. <laughs> I mean, I got, a, I got a, you know, my wife, but I'm taken by Jesus. I'm taken by the Lord. Amen. Paul and, and Jennifer... I don't know if he's wearing his ring today, but they actually put a tattoo of each other's name right there. And so they're, they're taken. Well, the Bible says that we've been sealed by Holy Spirit. I belong to God. I belong to God. Hello. Let me, let me read this to you real quick. Isaiah 43. You guys all right? Yeah. Isaiah 43, the Lord says this in verse 1. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are Mine. I'm looking for something deeper. That's deep right there. <laughs> in fact, the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 7 that we are a special treasure to God. Yeah. See, mindset changes everything. Amen. When you realize whose you are, yeah. then you know who you are. Yeah, and you know what you have access to. I had Lenny, Brother Lenny, he, he came up to me the other day. He said, man, my whole, my whole perception, my whole per perspective on, on work has changed. Everything's changed at work now. And he said, ever since you preached that whenever I go to work for somebody, that I need to look at them as though I am working for the Lord. He said it changed everything. So you need to see yourself that you are the Lord's. You belong to God. You think he's just going to let you hunger? No way. We're his children. He's going to take he's going to take care of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Is that good?